Welcome back to another Construct video and this one we're looking at our top-down roguelike dungeon crawler. Currently we've got it to the stage where we can move around the level and we can swing our sword and the enemy can attack us and eventually kill us. Now one bug I want to fix first of all is our sword just stays there floating in the air. So to fix that it's a nice simple fix. We just go to our event sheets, scroll down and we just need to check for when the player is destroyed. Just here. And we're also going to add action, sword. I'm just going to destroy the sword as well. Now this just needs to be moved up to when the player is destroyed. So now when we die, our sword isn't floating there in the air and we can still swing it. It'll be destroyed with the player as well. Now the big thing I want to look at in this video is adding knockback. So when our player is hit, it pushes the player out the way. So they're not getting hit again quite so quickly. So... In order to do this, we need to set up a couple of things. So first of all, here we've got if the enemy is overlapping the player and the player is not flashing, so they're not invulnerable, what do we want to do? Well, currently we're subtracting one from health. We're actually going to right click on this, toggle, and disable. This means we can no longer die because we're no longer losing health, and this is really good for testing. Next, what we want to do is actually look at adding some sort of knockback. So to do this, we need to add an action. We need to go to our player. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the deacceleration to zero. This means when they get pushed back, we can push them back a distance and deacceleration is not going to play a factor to stop them from moving. Then what I'm going to do is go to our player and we're going to set their vector x. So this allows us to set how far they're moving in an x direction. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. So we actually need to take the cosine. And then from here we can take an angle and this is going to take in four variables. So the first one we need is x1 which is going to be our player's x position. Next we need is y1 which is our player dot y. Then we need our enemy dot x and our enemy dot y. And what this is doing is this is getting the angle between those two points. Now, we actually want to push the player away from the enemy, not towards it. So we're going to do plus 180. So all of that, that gets our final number. Oh, made a mistake there, so we're just going to change that to enemy.x. And finally, we're going to times that by a knockback factor. We're going to start off as 200. Next, we need to do the same for the vector y. So we can copy and paste this. Double click on it. Move back and do set vector y. The only difference with vector y is we're going to change the cosine to sine instead. And we're still doing by 200. Now, to make this more efficient, what we can do is we can right click. We can add a global variable. I'm going to call this knockback factor. I'm going to set this to 200. I like to have all my global variables at the top, so I'm just going to move this to the top. And then instead of times them by 200, we can times by a knockback factor. This means we only have to change one number at the top if we want to increase or decrease our knockback. And then finally, we need to set our deacceleration back to what it was before. So we're just going to click on our player and mine set to 350. So player, set the acceleration to 350. One thing I've just missed is we just need to add a short weight. So we're just going to scroll down to weight. I'm going to add 0.5 seconds. Hit done. We're just going to put this before we deaccelerate. Now, if the player pushes against the knockback, they'll be pushed back a smaller amount. If you want to prevent this, what we can also do is take our player and we can set ignore input. So start ignoring their inputs. We'll do this right at the start, and then we can copy and paste this. And after that 0.5 seconds, we can take the user's input again. This just means they can't push against the knockback and reduce their knockback. They'll get the same amount of knockback each time. So let's test this now. You see, as we get hit, we're getting pushed away. Now you see my sword glitch to begin with. I don't know why this happens. It seems to just happen once at the start and then it's fine. So let's test and play around with yours and see if you get the same issue. But you see we are getting pushed around by our enemy in the right direction now. So we are getting some sort of knockback. 
Next, we want to apply the same to our enemy. So what we can do for this is where we subtract one from health, we can also apply knockback. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So first thing that we need to do is we actually have to add the eight directions onto our enemy. So for this, just right click, edit behaviors, make sure they've got the eight directions on. Now with the enemy, what you want to do is just make sure the eight directions, you've got default controls set to no and set angle set to no. Once you've got that, we can actually take a lot of the code that we've done before to save a bit of time. So we're gonna take all of this here. So I'm using shift to select all of that, copy it, and then paste it below our enemy. Now this all still has to do with our player. So we're just gonna right click, replace object, and we're gonna do pick the object to be replaced. So we're gonna replace our player with our enemy. So this changes all of them now to be on our enemy instead of our player. Now there's a couple of things we do need to fix for using this method. It's just these two lines here. So instead of enemy X, enemy Y, enemy X, enemy Y, we want the second group to now be player and player. We just need to do the same for the Y as well. And that should be all set up. Final thing you might want to do is add a second knockback factor. So we've got this one here, take knockback factor two or enemy knockback factor. And this is just if you want to have a separate knockback for enemies versus the player. So I'm just gonna go here now, I'm gonna double click on here. I'm gonna change this to say enemy knockback factor instead. And again, if you want your enemies to be knocked back much further or a shorter distance, we can just edit this variable as well. So now let's attack our enemies and see what this does. So that wasn't a very good demo because I've just killed him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his health right up. So I'm going to click on him and change his health to 40. You see he's getting beat around and knocked out of the way. So if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment and consider subscribing to the channel. Next video, we'll start looking at how we can add health potions that we can pick up and some coins that are all randomized throughout the level. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.